to talk about more about China's property market. We're joined by Eric Pong, Head of Investment, Jones Long LaSalle, Beijing. Eric, great to have you in the studio with us. Good First of all, huh? yeah. Chinese property market is growing, but at a slower pace. Is this within your expectation? Yes, indeed. Um, it, I think you're talking about the residential market and with the housing data release, we think we, we need to more closely look at market forces. The demand is still there. And actually, the pent up demand since last two years mm -hmm. when the housing purchase in restriction has been introduced to the market. And then, you know, market comes to the stage that the pent up demand is releasing and also there's a sign that the pricing will not drop, will not drop. and then the buyers just call into the market. Mm. The, you talk about the pent up demand, how, how big is it? Well, take Beijing for example. In the past the five years, we looked at the population in Beijing urban district has grown by 25% at the least. Mm. And also, now as of today, Beijing is becoming a host city for 44 global Fortune 500 companies, mm -hmm. headquarters based mm -hmm. in Beijing. It's accumulated a huge amount of high-income executives, expatriates, and also white-collar workers. Mm -hmm. This group of people need housing. Urbanization and accumulation of wealth. Accumulation growth of the business. Right. But uh, we also noticed that one of the reasons of this red-hot uh, property market is also because many Chinese people don't have that many investment channels. So they look at fixed asset uh, market a lot. And uh, Chinese people do not. Um, actually uh, investing overseas market a lot because of that cap of exchange. Individuals like you and, I, you and me have like 50,000 US dollar cap, per year. right? Yeah, per year. So it's limited about how much Chinese people can invest overseas. But from that story we see in Australia, there's so many uh, millionaires Chinese investing there. So how will these Chinese outbound investment into property market play, play out? I think the Australian market should feel happy mm -hmm. with the Chinese investor penetration. I think the limit, you're talking about limits. I think the limits is not only for the private individual investors. Mm. I think it's also for the in Chinese institutional investors. But we see a growing trend of outbound investment. According to our JL data, we see last year in 2012, the in-block commercial asset, the, the transaction volume made by the Chinese investor has reached more than 12 billion US dollar. Mm -hmm. 26 percent of them mm -hmm. is made in overseas. That means Chinese investors is piling their investment in overseas market. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the trends is not only impact the commercial market but also residential housing market. Mm -hmm. And I think the trend for the residential will strong will going stronger than the commercial sector. Your company has outlets and global chains all over the world. Do you have a reservation? Uh, do you have observations that? like in US or in Europe, for example, New York and London, a growing demand from Chinese home buyers? Oh, yes, indeed. We actually have 239 corporate offices around the globe. We clearly monitor that the strong growth in Chinese investors in the outbound market. Uh, I think the recent two years, Europe market, especially London, is an absolute winner mm -hmm. of the outbound Chinese invest investment. And also, Sydney, New York, San Francisco, the gateway city in other the gateway global, cities. The gateway cities in other traditional commercial market and residential market has embraced a lot of Chinese investment. Mm -hmm. well. by, by gateway, you mean with direct flights to other global places? In I would say it's more transparent, mm -hmm. more established, more matured market. That's the thing. It's not only for Chinese investors. It's for most overseas investors to target. I think also Shanghai. We look at Shanghai. Our data shows it's actually Shanghai is becoming the top 10 overseas investment destination cities in past two years. Mm -hmm. And 17 billion of US dollar has invested, 26% of the total investment volume in Shanghai is actually overseas investment. Mm. It's happened in past two years. Mm. I think that's why the uh, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences earlier said that China's uh, whole market is facing a risk of going out of control because Beijing and Shanghai rose by 12, 13 percent young year in June. Is that such a risk or do you think it's just over exaggerating? I think it's a market force dynamic. I want to refer back to the demand force, not on, only in the individual housing market but also in the commercial sector. Again, Beijing rental increased 
twice, almost twice in the past 24 months. Mm -hmm. That's because the demand force has driven the market. And also the vacancy has been dropping and from 25% in 2010 to today's figure at 4.4%. Just 4%. 4%. And uh, our second quarter data shows, I think this vacancy number will be getting downward pressure through the second half of the year and also the coming year. Appreciating all these numbers, but uh, it seems the government is running out of answers quickly. Uh, Beijing used to do the global child, those uh, property, uh, those transaction capital gain tax. Now it seems it's going to its last resort, the property tax. When and how do you think it will be enacted? We really appreciate the challenging condition and the environment that the regu uh, regulatory bodies are facing at the moment. I think the most of them, including the taxation policies and also including the home purchase restriction and lending restriction mm -hmm. in the market, is mostly focused on tackling the demand. Mm -hmm. As I said, the demand force is there. It won't be reduced anyhow. I think most of the cases we we'll want to see the increased, the growing supplies, especially in the mid and, and low-end housing market and also the social housing market mm -hmm. to be provided to the market to balance the demand for. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately the market will work itself. So it should be focusing on the luxurious and... We should be focusing on the tackling the luxury right. supply but also increase the supply in the median and low-end so social housing Thanks as well. Thanks for that. And what about commercial housing market? That's your expertise area. The Home and the, the office rental prices seem to be going up in first tier cities all the, all, all the time. In fact, Beijing first quarter has been corrected 2% mm. after continuous two, two years aggressive growth. Mm -hmm. Shanghai growing, most of first tier is growing. I think, I think the commercial sector is really driven by the growth of Chinese economy, like Chinese companies' growth. I th we see that trends will co continue. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Right. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, head over.